This is the Riot Podcast, in which much fun and excitement and danger. <laughs> well, hold on. Not too much. All a right, reasonable, any, responsible amount of danger. Nikki's right. It's not <laughs> It's not as much as you would be led to believe. But hopefully a lot of fun. Hopefully you'll enjoy what we gather today for you. So in the podcast, we talk about Dance Dance Revolution. A web browser one. Me having a visit probably from the Ghosts of Christmas Future. Uh, emotional eating, microwaved bowls, uh, shoes, the NBA, drive-ins, meat vending machines, mm-hmm. poop rivers, <laughs> stealthing an account. Again, when you sometimes put our show and just say it all in like one sentence, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think it's helpful. Like we have music, at least when you listen to it on Radio U. You guys don't get music on the podcast, but I think that's helpful to it have some does, spacing in between. It breaks it up. <laughs> It breaks it up, and sometimes it really needs that. And when we hear the description just all in one say, it's like, oh, yeah, that was this morning. Uh, maybe. You guys thinking about taking a break anytime soon? I know. It's all right. Uh, all right. Well, hey, you guys enjoy the podcast today. Um, I'm going to go take a nap. Just kidding. I'm working. I got two things to remind everybody about. Oh, that's right. So first thing, if you've never, you know, speaking of Radio U, you can actually help support the riot. If you're interested in doing a virtual 5K with us, you can join us at RadioU.com slash virtual 5K. You can help support Radio U and the riot, get some exercise, have some fun, grab one of our 5K race shirts and the medal as well. So join us there at RadioU.com slash 5K. On our Facebook pages tomorrow we're going to be doing an after show playing animal crossing uh so obi and i are going to set up my animal crossing finally uh so make sure you just join us if you want live or if not sometime plan over the weekend on our facebook page at radio u riots all right that should be about it that's all i got okay thank you everybody high five from across the room (laughs) you guys are the best (laughs) thanks for listening seriously bye A Rotten Tomatoes score so high, they refuse to make it public. The Riot on Radio U. (laughs) Guys, I had a cautionary tale this morning. I saw it. I saw the the ghost of Christmas future came to visit me this morning. What happened? (laughs) I'm afraid to ask. We don't mess with Christmas. I I didn't even think about it that way till just now, but I see it. Spirit! Are these things that must be? <laughs> or are these things that may be? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I stopped at the gas station this morning like I do. And in front of me, like, we walked in together was this guy who, like, he was built about the same way I am. But he probably weighed a solid, I would say, like, 50, 60 pounds more than I do. Like, he had a like a solid belly working on him. And he walks, he walks in. And uh, he was probably 10 years older than I am, maybe a little bit older. So I'm walking with him. He weighs a little bit more. He's a little bit older. He he has a mullet. Okay. He goes over and gets soda. Yeah. Two sodas. Oh, you saw your future. Instead of just one. <laughs> I just got it. I thought you were like, is he like Santa? What is no. it? And then oh. he grabbed like a uh, couple little he grabbed Roller a couple, dogs. He, no, a couple donuts. <laughs> <laughs> couple of sodas and uh, like a not a two liter, but like a one liter or something. So obviously for a refill later. Now, look, that could have been like he could have been getting that for a couple of people, but probably not. But I just didn't feel like he was. I felt like that was those were his supplies for the sure, day. Sure. He was in there at the same time I was. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. This is where I'm headed. See, Obi's had a um, a long history with how much soda should we have? Little, a lot. Right. So you saw what, if you went even further into it, what like, would this, happen? This is it. I Somehow, <laughs> I have been given a window into a potential future for me. An extra 50 pounds, couple of donuts, couple of sodas. A refill and, soda for when you buy the first one. And just let your hair go. Now, what happened though the other day? Didn't you say we became a rewards member of? Oh, Nikki, I'm a. Is this the place? This is my second, my second uh, month as a gold. You're member. a gold member at this gas station because you get so much soda. That's right. So, what are you going to do? Is this a cautionary tale or? Well, I don't know. Like maybe I. It's diet. It's. <laughs> 
it's I don't what know. What was he getting? Did you see? No, I couldn't. I oh, couldn't see. Oh, you should have saw what he got. I felt like I, he definitely there was definitely Mountain Dew involved, but I I don't know. And what's even sadder is like I didn't get soda. I went straight to an energy drink this oh, morning. Oh, you did. Yeah. So I mean, like, <laughs> oh, then you're not him. You're fine. You're fine. No, but see, it I ha- I'm headed in that direction. Now, to be clear, there's nothing wrong with like this guy's living his life. He's doing his thing. Is fine. But when I saw it, I was like. This I, in ten years, this could be me. Like I've just decided that you what, got a mullet. You're drinking more soda. That's right. the part we're focusing on the intake. Well, I just felt like he was me, but like amplified. Yeah. So I, for all I know, he's working at uh, Radio Z down the road. I like I don't know. And again, it's not so much <laughs> that it was wrong. Sure. It was just that I saw it and I was like, okay, this is the definition like this is where i could be going well jerome said cautionary tale or life goals maybe both don't know that's a good question maybe maybe it was i was given a vision to see how good things could get oh that's which way is it then (laughs) i'm gonna have to think about it yeah you are (laughs) i'm gonna have to think about it your, your thoughts on that might change day to day i might just be like you know what that's a happy Maybe person. Maybe that's the best. Yeah, I was given I was given a snapshot of my best <laughs> life now. The good part. Oh, well, at least you'll still be drinking soda, right? That's some and walking. Yeah, and who knows? the The mullet look uh, has come back in during the quarantine. Man, I'll tell you what. Like, I feel like there's really when it comes to hair, there's one or two best options, and that is cut it really short or just let, let it, it grow. <laughs> So I've got it pretty short right now. Maybe that's where I'm headed. So I'm these are like, some, you're right, these are some goals. That gives me more money to reinvest in soda. And you'll notice the word, invest. Invest, because you're going to now be getting more along yeah. with some donuts. Don- <laughs> donut, and sounds, it is, donut sounds pretty good right now. Because remember, tomorrow it's National Donut, donut Day. Day yep. So maybe he was just celebrating a little early or could've just been, taking the whole week for it. Could have been stocking up. When I was in there yesterday, because yes, I've been there wow. every day. Uh, I almost bought, they have like little cake pops. Yeah. And I was like, no, I got to stay strong. But maybe I should just give in. Everything you love about the Riot, plus a handy dandy fast forward option. This is the worst of the Riot podcast. I just wish you guys could be in here. I mean, you can hear us, but I want you to be sitting in here seeing some of what happens in between. We've made a mistake. (laughs) And we're trying to figure it out. And by we, it's me. (laughs) First off, she's bringing in like a 10-course meal every day. No, it's just my leftovers. It's the last set of leftovers for this meat thing I made the other day. Mm -hmm. And it's in this little, cute little uh, container that has like a little lid. I heated it up in it, but I had the lid on it because I thought I only have like a minute between the songs. So, so I, I thought, can't take the lid off. So I don't want to take the lid off because it'll cook faster, right? Well, the problem is it cooked the pressure and now the the, the plastic lid is, is, is like sealed. I can't open it. And the pressure has caused the the walls of the container to suck in and I can't open it. I can't get my food. <laughs> It's gone. actually hilarious. It's gone. <laughs> She's just sitting here I'm staring trying. at it like, I just want to eat it. It was all warm and it's probably not hot anymore. No, that's not true. Microwaves, you know how it is. It's going to be blazing hot. After looking online, Obi was right. He suggested you go in there and decrease the temperature of the plastic. Or I think I go in and I heat it up more so it breaks the seal for a moment. Um. I think we should start with cooling it down because I'm a little concerned about <laughs> what more. heating it up more is going to do to it. I'm actually concerned that I think it if it'll just pop in here and just hot stuff will just go everywhere. I'm a little worried. Well, I'll tell you. And for- then comes a memo. <laughs> Please stop bringing your Please microwave stop. pressurized containers into the studio. Yeah, pretty much it's like a pressure cooker. And then we can't do that anymore. And it's my fault, but no one will say it's exactly my fault. Right. That's oh. the best. I love it when we address the whole crowd, but everyone knows who it's really for. And it's me, but I clean it all off, but I miss some. It's still there. The email is crafted and they accidentally leave Nikki's name in one uh, of the yeah. places where it should say everyone. <laughs> So you see, it's me, and I know it's me, but I just want my breakfast. Well, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play Dens, and you go run that cold water. And then see if it lifts. 
and we hope it works out. I'm going to move my face to the side, so if if anything pops. (laughs) Maybe you need, go put one of the face masks on. Oh, yeah, I'll put a towel around my face. At least it'll cover your mouth, so that part of you will still work, so we can still do the show. So I can still do the show. I have terrible burns, but it's fine. She can still do the show. We'll see to those after the show is over. And I think the most important part, though, is that I don't I don't have my breakfast yet. I really wanted the breakfast. Mm. You think it'll be okay? It's gonna be great. It'll be fine. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it. It's gonna. It's baptized by fire. It's born of adversity. <laughs> You're gonna have the best breakfast ever. You ever have one of those days where you just wanted your breakfast and you just wanted? It to be simple. Man, I feel like that's my whole life. <laughs> and it's just not happening. Wow. Not only are you already awake, but you're listening to The Riot. Your day is off to a pretty rough start. The Riot on Radio U. Emotional eating is a thing. Now, I don't really think it's much of a thing for me. I just eat crappy all the time. Well, you're more consistent. <laughs> so... Good for you. I say as I wait for an opportunity to open these Pop Tarts. <laughs> no, for me, I'll be like, "Hey, it's been a great day, great day, bad." Well, all right, let's let's just you know end the day on a high note. <laughs> let's let's go out swinging. Let's have something. Woo. You know, the days. This is what I say in my head: the day's ruined, anyways. And it's like it's not. It's not ruined I at like all. That a lot. <laughs> well, the day's shot. Might as well. I can try again tomorrow. <laughs> Well, this study at the University of Salzburg, uh, they actually met with 80 female students. Uh, So maybe this is not true of men. We'll see. Uh, But some of them categorized themselves as emotional eaters. And here's what they found. The people that were emotional eaters, they actually rated the the taste of food better if Mm -hmm. they were in a negative emotional state. Oh, yeah. So they're, Makes sense. they're actually saying that they, so let's say you really like cheeseburgers. They said when they're sad, the cheeseburger's so much better. Even better. Wow. That's, I don't want to, I don't want to get any deeper. Okay. I don't like, want to know anymore. That's like insidious. Like, I think we know this, but I don't want to. Well, but it's a fascinating idea because. what if then you're in your mind, you're always like, hey, you turn to making yourself sadder so that you get that high from the food even more. Oh, so my it tastes gosh. even better. You know what? I went home and like I, our brain will do that. I watched I watched some really sad movies and then I just got so high on a cheeseburger. You don't even know. I don't want to think of us doing this. But it's it is fascinating though because if you think about the idea that you. Uh, Hey, I do this, like whether it's a negative mood or like whatever, I have found times where I'll, I'm subconsciously, I'm thinking about things that I want to do or things that I enjoy. And I'm like, why am I doing that? It's like, oh, I'm trying to lift my mood. So the idea that if, if you struggle with say comfort eating, it, it makes sense because it's not just like, Hey, the burger is good. Apparently when you're sad, it's really It's what you good. needed. It's like what it's you had to have. Really good, Good. Guys. And, oh, no. It's fascinating. <laughs> that is so, interesting. I mean, with a sample size of 80 people, I wouldn't necessarily say that we've cracked the code. Yeah. But it well, is an interesting observation. Just take a, you know, a look back at the last couple of months during our stay-at-home times and see how <laughs> did we... How did we comfort ourselves? Might be something to that. I think a lot of us came out of that as more emotional eaters than maybe going into it. It was bad enough the first time around, but now it's worse. Don't believe us? Just keep listening. You'll find out soon enough. This is the Worst of the Riot Podcast. I, like, really not trying to say anything, uh, I don't know, controversial here. Other people I'm starting to hear say it, but I've been wondering it. Man, I lived in my basement for like 14 weeks and everybody on Memorial Day weekend is out. Now we're all out protesting. So like, are we all going to get sick now or what? Everybody's just waiting. What's the deal? Like in two weeks, do we find out that COVID-19 was like so March and not really a big deal? Or is it going to be like, you don't even know? Well, they're saying if you did any protesting that you need to get tested so that you can find out because they had... And it depends on the area that you're at, but at least in our area, they were pushing on Reddit a lot that they had a confirmed case. Oh, at of a someone who protest? went, yeah, who's someone who was sick and knowingly still went out. Because I was just interesting last night uh, with some friends, uh, just observing behavior and including my own. That I was kind of busy, 
the volunteering at this thing and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, some of them were wearing masks and some of them were not. Some of them were way hands off. Some of them were not. And seeing that, but the people who were kind of hands off and being more protective, uh, definitely the minority in the crowd that I was in. Yeah, more people are just not necessarily 100% like back to normal, but I think it's it's more than we would have expected right now. I thought right. there would be more people that would be a little hesitant. The thing that I was doing that I wouldn't normally do is that I used hand sanitizer a ton yeah, that's in that good. mix. Uh, but, I, you know, I did not wear a mask and many other people did not. But I, I do. I just find myself wondering. You, I see organizations continuing to take substantial steps. And, in fact, we're going to talk in a minute about what the NBA is talking about doing. Uh, but I just find myself going, man, is this... Like what? What's happening here? Like, is this a, is this going to be a thing? Are we all going to get sick, or did we vastly overestimate, et cetera, et cetera? I, I don't know. Just have to wait. Uh, Chicago Health Department. They came out yesterday and said, "Hey, if you've protested, we're asking you to self quarantine for fourteen days." Fourteen. Oh, so they're back. So even if you get the test and they say, because sometimes you don't get, um, you know. You might not get any of these symptoms, so you might not feel like you should go get a test, but you still should. Well, they did not say, all right, like, admittedly, I did not do a deep dive on the Chicago Health Department's website. I just saw in the statement that they had issued that they were like, yeah, if you've been out protesting, self-quarantine for 14 days. Because people that are out protesting respond super well to a government agency telling them to stay home. (laughs) Well, at least they tried. (laughs) You know, I... it's a complicated it is. situation. It is. <laughs> and I get that, but wow. Right? Okay. Maybe the riot would sound better if they spent less time improving their lives at their gym. That was sarcasm. It's the riot on Radio U. So we know that professional sports has been, you know, taking a break. Right? Well, the NBA is ready to... Break fast. They're coming back. Uh, they are saying, I, I don't think it's official, but it looks like it's probably happening, that the NBA is going to resume play in July. 22 teams. They start in Orlando. Um, they'll run July 31st through October 12th. And the idea is that these teams would return. They would play eight games, which would determine the seeding. Mm-hmm. And then they would do the NBA finals. Oh, that way? And do a championship, yes. That, and they're all just going to play in Orlando. I guess so. Okay. I, I mean, I I assume that means that they will, uh, you know, social distance or if they're going to be holed up somewhere. I well, don't know. I, I think probably because they were kind of doing this with golf and I think with racing, too, is uh, they want to make sure that the crew and the players, everybody who's involved in the production and stuff kind of has a chance to quarantine beforehand. Right. Then make sure everybody's healthy. Then it's all the same people doing all the the games, like behind the scenes. Yeah. That's like, that's tough. I mean, it's a large amount of money and et cetera, et cetera. This is their job. But like, that would be tough. The idea of like, okay, um, I'm going to go buy family, buy whatever. I'm going to go live down here in the NBA compound for oh, three months. They don't mind. They don't care. I'm sure it's fine. I mean, I'm sure they, still it is. Ha- they can still travel back and forth. I'm sure. May- maybe. Like, well, but, yeah, wasn't they- that the, but wasn't that the major league baseball thing where they were like, no, we're not oh, going to yeah, do that. That's right. I guess, I guess you, yeah, they now, should there's stay. No, they don't say they're quarantining sure. in what I'm looking at. In fact, what I'm looking at here says this is still all rumor. Mm-hmm. So I, it's not a confirmed thing yet, but uh, sources are telling ESPN that that's what is probably going to happen. And so that would be July 31st through October 12th. 13 Western Conference teams, nine Eastern Conference teams. They play eight regular season games. Then that goes off to determine the playoff stuff. All right. There we go. Man, ESPN, those guys, like, you want to talk about a tough time to work at a network. Like, you. Oh, like what they've they, had during they've this time? They canceled almost all sports. So you suddenly had to go from reporting on sports to health news. And now you're having to cover, you know, what's going on culturally right now. And in the meantime, you're just like, maybe one day basketball will be back. Well, you have to see, like, what will the numbers be? Because they always say it's like 30 days to break or make a habit. Yeah. So everybody's been away from sports for such a long time. If you were a real super fan or if you like to watch it, have you spent enough time away from it to where 
Are you going to go back to watching it or is it not as interesting to you anymore? How will it feel? I, the people I know that love sports. They're ready, they're ready and waiting. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, they'll go back. <laughs> don't worry. There's a Wasn't lot sure. of, there's a lot of things well, then, that should like be concerned. It more. I th- I think they're gonna fall back in love with a passion you've never seen. Because normally they'll uh, they'll know because they missed it. <laughs> no, they miss it, Nikki. Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> you were one of the lucky few who missed the riot when they were live. Yet here you are. I also like to live dangerously. This is the worst of the riot podcast. So apparently, the hotness for this summer is the drive-in tour. Yeah. Have you been seeing this? I saw a couple of bands. If anybody remembers the Newsboys, they're doing one of those. Well, it started also with um, just like drive-in movie theaters. Right. As one of the only ways, if you're not in a, if you're in an area where they were more locked down, to actually be able to see a movie. Uh, Yeah. And so now they're becoming the concert venue of choice. And I saw yesterday... Jim Gaffigan just announced oh, is he doing he's one? doing a drive-in tour. All right. They go to drive-in theaters, and you you pay by car usually. Yes. Uh, it'll just depend on the event, because I saw that some were by the car, and some were you had to pay for each person in the car. Uh, though I've heard that people will get under the blankets. They'll hide. So they don't have to pay as much. Like, what are we doing? Like, they won't notice you. Right. Because <laughs> your car's so big. I know, right? And we're, you know, adults. But that's that's the hotness. Like, they're going to do a drive-in tour. Would you go to Does, a drive-in? To a Jim Gaffigan uh, one? I don't know if comedy works like that. I don't know. Meaning? I could just be watching my phone in the car of one of his comedy specials. Oh, you just said exactly <laughs> what I said. Now, if you could. I, that was my first thought. I was <laughs> like, you know what? I don't see what the difference is. If you've ever seen a comedian, like... In person, that's more the energy and the yeah. fun of being in the auditorium or whatever. If maybe you could pop the trunk open and like sit and still be out of the car, technically, and, and that also depends on the venue and stuff. I saw and your where. Car. <laughs> well, I've seen. I, I did a little digging into this, and some venues of these drive-ins are like, no, you can't get out of your car. You must stay in the car. Others are allowing you to get out of the car, but, like, you can't leave your space Yeah, but if you had a little uh, blanket space next to it that you could right. sit out there, if they allowed that, then I, I'd probably be more for it. But then you can't see because it's just a bunch of cars in front of you. Well, yeah, but you just want to hear. Listen, maybe I see the flaws shoot, in this. Maybe they'll shoot video, and then he'll show up on the big drive-in screen. Probably, to be able to see him. I saw Jim Gaffigan in an arena, mm-hmm. and I, I felt like I might as well have been watching him on TV. You know, I was, like, three miles away from him i could see this little stick figure of a man and then i knew it was jim gaffigan because of what i could see on the big screen well yeah (laughs) but i mean i couldn't identify him as jim gaffigan it's it's not quite what you think it's going to be so it depends on the pricing like how much are they going to charge for this don't know because if they treat it like a premium experience and try to charge everybody more i don't know i'll bet they do but it leads to getting things back to normal you got to start with something I see. I have no no problem imagining this is true. So they're not they're calling it drive through comedy, but it's at a drive in. So and eh, whatever. But that's something that's happening. If you have a drive in in your area, take a look because they're becoming the hot venue of the summer. <laughs> Can you? I was there ever be outside? Was there ever an industry that was so close to the brink of oblivion? Like there's only there aren't that many drive-in theaters left in the United States and now out of nowhere everybody's like oh, we could go to the drive-in. Well, I don't know would they would they consider it just a drive-in places or would they pick uh auditoriums that have large parking lots could you do the same thing in something like that? I would imagine. Listen, if you want to drive in right now, sell this is it. This is the moment you've been waiting for. I don't see this coming back again, all right? This is the last hurrah. This is the moment <laughs> you've been waiting for. It's time. We'll just have to see how that, that works out. We would give the riot flowers to show our appreciation, but Obadiah's probably allergic. What isn't he allergic to? This is the riot on Radio U. I've got to say a big thanks to Zach. Uh, yesterday, he sent me a tip on some shoes on Amazon. Oh, did you end up liking them? You know what? I bought a pair. You did. They are okay. I don't. I don't really like the idea of buying shoes online because who the heck knows? But I start looking into it. 
You, I bought them. The shipping was free, and I can return them for free. So what's the harm? Well, I mean, well, you know what? I would say it's a big hassle, but I've got a UPS store not too far from where I live, and if you do an Amazon return now, you don't even have to pack it up. No, you just drop it off you just to them. Have them scan the little thing and drop it off. That's all right. <laughs> I can do that. You don't even have to have the box. You just go walk on in. Just here. It's your problem now. <laughs> I like that. Even though whenever I do that, I just like, uh, are you gonna, can I, I ask him we, for, I ask him for go? a receipt. Yeah, they receipt. give you the receipt. But. Yeah, but. Uh, so you got the, is it the TSLA? The TSLA. These shoes. Oh my gosh, what is this? The TSA shoe? Did I just miss that? No, we just kept, I don't know how they get. I think they call it the Tesla, the even Tesla. though it's TSLA. Uh, yeah, so I went ahead and went with one. Now, I haven't gotten it yet. It'll come in today, but uh, they were like 30 bucks. And they're supposed to be a minimalist running shoe, but I'm looking for, here's the idea I had. Nikki, I can keep these really old crappy Adidas shoes I have, and then I'll just use these shoes in the gym. Perfect. So my day-to-day wear, I'll just stay in these shoes that have no support, have nothing left. Wait, 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 wait. I thought we were buying new shoes for our day-to-day wear. No, these are just for the gym. No, you need new shoes. At $30, why don't you just get two pairs then? Well, let's get them in here and see if they're any good. And see, For all we know, (laughs) Zach could be like one of those people that's like, hey, did you use my (laughs) referral code when you bought those shoes? No. I don't know, Zach. He just texted. He said, you're welcome. So hopefully these shoes work out. You're welcome. And here comes the text. Make sure you use my (laughs) referral number when you purchase them. Well, hopefully you like them. We'll find out then. It would be great to find a a good shoe like that. But you need a new day-to-day shoe. I resist that. Don't forget that. Your other ones you've had for a long time. And they're still doing great. I know, but we talked about yesterday. Look how nice they are. The closer you look at them... The, the more you notice about how the... What are you doing staring at my feet anyway? You my took your shoes off. Yes, yeah, whatever. Here. You took your shoes off yesterday. You were just waving them around. Yeah. Well, I mean, I do that sometimes. Sometimes I throw my shoes at people. Wow. Well, you know, it's the only thing you have. You just want to get someone's attention. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> they don't listen. Oh, well, I'm glad. Anybody who ever has any good tips of like something you absolutely love... Don't just hold on to that. Share that. No, seriously, though. Case I would is something love. we might like. Typically, the way I run my shoe process is I buy new shoes, and then my old shoes become my gym shoes. And you don't want to use your Adidas as your gym shoes? Well, they can, they could be. Yeah, use your new ones for your day-to-day for day-to-day. Day. We'll see. All right? If you're good, maybe. Or we'll turn the show around. But hey, thanks, Zach, for the tip. If you've ever got a hot tip, as Nikki said, 8772-RADIO-U, because we love online footwear. We asked, okay? Worst Worst of of the the riot. riot. Radio U. Well, what I wanted to play for you was Mm -hmm. this. CDR Max 2. Let's max. Dance, dance revolution. A ghost from Nikki and I's past. It's a game that's had many versions of it. Oh, so many versions, Nikki. It's basically a... Dance game where you would dance on a dance pad. Yeah, you get a dance pad and you've got an up, back, left, and right arrow, and you dance to the things that you see on the screen where the arrows are, and it gets insane. It, and where I can't. It was such a workout. Dude, I, <laughs> I used to play DDR for hours. And I was still fat. So <laughs> Like everybody acts it like it doesn't mean you're gonna lose weight, it, but it's still a workout. This is my gateway to losing tons of weight. No, 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 still fat. No, a lot of people did. It was a big workout thing. I'm sure somebody somewhere probably lost all kinds of weight. Good for them, whatever. Um, but with DDR, uh, they have released a browser version, aka you can just play it on your computer, and if you have the right controller, you can plug it in to your PC. And play DDR that way. Oh, you can. Or you can just use your keys on your keyboard, which is really boring. But you're not using a dance pad. No. Unless you're like, man, my fingers could use a workout. (laughs) Then this will be perfect for you. But you would be able to play with your fingers just like that if you want to. Now, Nikki, I see here that I'm sure it's really crappy, but I could get you a dance pad that plugs in via USB for about $15. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that works great. You, you know it's not a good <laughs> I don't one. think it's probably the best. Or hear from, uh, what is this? This is B&H Photo. Uh, they have one for $140. <laughs> it's, pro- it's probably nicer. So this has actually been around for a few weeks. We just mm-hmm. missed it. You, do you want to know the truth? Did I you cho- see it? 
I did. I oh, was just I like, never shared it. I was just like, you know what? Nobody wants to hear about oh, your stupid DDR stuff. Oh, no. now that's a negative attitude. But then Nikki put it on the list, and I was like, maybe someone does want to hear yeah. about my stupid DDR stuff. So you can hook up a controller if you want to, but you need a Konami account. You do. And if you don't read Japanese, like. You might need a little bit of a Google auto translate thing to help you. Um, but they say, they just tell you, click on the first orange tab on the left of the home page, and then you're good to go. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> In case you have any problems with it. So, oh, wow, man. You can really go all out with these DDR pads. Here's one that's like metal and stuff $740. But they say that it will give you the real arcade experience at home. I'll there you it, go. I bet it costs a ton to ship that thing. It's got to be so heavy, right? Maybe it's so heavy it just doesn't ship, actually. You can't afford it. You're telling me that I've got to drive to, what, South America somewhere to pick it up? Well, how much of a fan are you? I mean, like, kind of. Then you don't deserve it. Okay. If you're not going to go pick it up, it's not for you. That's fair. <laughs> In case you're wondering, yes, we do get complaints. They have gone too far. This time, they are going to be held. Accountable. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Oh, friends, if there's anything that's really important to me right now, it's whether or not we're going to have football this fall. College football is... Okay, there's OB some saying. more important things happening in the world right now. I hyperbolize, <laughs> but I sure would like to know if we're going to play football this fall. Well, it goes back to the start of the stay at home. I think that's what a lot of people were... No, we're worried about even during such an early time at the beginning of the stay at home. It was only going to be two weeks. Oh, yeah, that's true. And I was like, man, once April gets here, it's going to be weird, right? Get to April and and we've all had two weeks off except for me. He was working all the time, but like everybody else be off and like good for them. (laughs) What month is it now? I don't know (laughs) what's happening. I don't know. Well, there's some news. It doesn't really cover football yet. It does not. But as a lot of schools, because in the beginning they talked about um, possibly even college classes not going back to still being virtual in the fall. Uh, But they're saying that for a lot of places, no, they are going to go back to having in-person classes. Well, and it, of course, depends on where you go to school. Mm -hmm. And and in some ways, let's keep in mind that this announcement that I'm going to share with you, that's subject to change, just like everything else. So according to since you're going to say it, (laughs) it's even more likely, even more likely to have a change. You know who to blame in five minutes. A retraction will no doubt be coming. (laughs) So last night, yesterday, the university board of trustees at the Ohio State University. So now we're talking about some of the bigger schools as they make their announcements. It's one of the biggest ones in the United States. Mm. Uh, They say that there will be a return to in-person classes This fall. I think it was August. Is it the 25th? Tuesday, August 25th. That'll be the first day of classes. They say it will be different. Uh, Let's see. Here's a list of things that they say will happen. Appropriate face coverings, physical distancing, hand hygiene, which, you know what? Even when this is all over, could we keep washing our hands? Maybe not 40 times a day, but what if it was, you know, five to ten times a day? Washing hands and then the importance of having the hand sanitizer stations around places. Limited density in indoor spaces, control of the flow of traffic into and around buildings. That means you go in one way and you go out the other. It does. Continued employee teleworking when possible. So if you work for the university, you may end up still staying home. Testing, symptom tracking, and contact tracing. So... Like they Oh, the contact tra- in case you are sick and then they right. can oh, I see. They can keep track of who Where has had been? contact with the person who was sick kind of a thing. So Well, what do we think? Um I think that here's what I th- I think that we won't really know until probably late June. Oh, if that where actually this goes. Is going. Because, oh, I think they'll wait until July. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying that they could chuck it at any time. Mm-hmm. But I feel like And it's not, to be clear, it's not just the protesting that's going on. I saw, at least where I live, most people took the COVID-19 guidelines, and as soon as Memorial Day hit, they were like, out the window. (laughs) Good idea, guys. (laughs) They blew their nose in them and threw them away. And that was what happened. (laughs) But I think now everybody is waiting, mostly from the larger amounts, if you're in an area where there's been protesting about the 
12 to 14 days after those started to see if that shows an increase. If it does, then that might show some changes from what people are expecting in the fall. But if not, I think things might open up even sooner. So, Oh, I I agree. Like, I, I really think that for what it's worth, and I know it's always been two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, but I think we get through mid-June and we don't see massive spikes in this infection, I think a lot of things are going to go back to normal in the fall. A lot of things. We'll see. And But right now, there's somebody out there. I can, Man, I swear, sometimes I feel like I can hear you guys in my head. <laughs> I just heard somebody going like, no! Why? And they don't so, want to go back? Or? No, because they're like, we're all going to die! Oh, I see. And then you've got somebody else that's like, it's all a lie! The whole thing has been a lie. <laughs> oh. Uh, well, you know, we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> You might be thinking that this won't be quite as bad the second time around. Well, you'd be greatly mistaken. We're listening to the worst of the Riot Podcast. Gotta say hi to Steven. Nikki, he just sent us a message on Facebook. Good morning, Steven. And he is, I'll just read it to you. He says, yeah. podcast listener, hearing about cheap parents on yesterday's podcast. Yeah. He says, my mom would wash off brand new Ziploc bags to reuse and... There was a spot in the kitchen drawer for partially used paper towels. Oh, really? <laughs> Where you could store it. I understand the bag thing because, like, like, I like now, the idea of a partially used paper now towel. we're supposed to be using reusable uh, Ziploc baggy things. So your, your mom was just reusable before it was cool. She was way ahead of the time. Like, she was a freaking back in the day. Now, if you're not doing it, then something's wrong with you. So, we had this whole thing yesterday where it was like stuff your parents did to save money that now seems shockingly cheap or annoying. And I couldn't entirely come up with anything. Like, my stepdad used to always get on me for leaving a light on in the basement. Yeah. And I was just like, man, who cares? That was, of course, didn't yell that. I was thinking it, though. Like, it's a light, whatever. But, but now. You were always nagged, at least, about that. I will say, for what it's worth, now that I have an electric bill, I'm like, maybe we'll just sit in the dark. It's fine. We don't even need to turn the light on. I just sit here in the dark all the time. Like, I don't know. Isn't it the rhythm of nature that keeps me alive? <laughs> It's fine. Uh, And then, well, I mean, I had a person in my life, an authority figure that made me feel terribly guilty, not only about the things I bought for myself, but also if someone purchased something for me. Yeah. Like every Christmas, they would make sure I knew that they didn't approve of my Christmas presents and things like that. So uh, there's that. There was that. But I don't know if that wants to make its way onto the list. It doesn't quite seem. (laughs) That's just a mean person. (laughs) Well, it made me realize why I always feel so guilty when I buy something. Yeah. So, and if anybody else wants to come to therapy with me, it's uh, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays hey, from... Hearing stories of some other people, too, like, I'm sure that line would be long. We could all stand a few. We could min- all stand minutes a Minutes to be able to talk things through. What about you, Nikki? Anything? like? My mom was always so generous. And, like, my mom is super nice. So yeah. I can't recall anything of where... She would get on me or, like, be too cheap about anything. My, she was always like, come on, have more Ziploc baggies. You know, that sort of thing. I, Steven, <laughs> I, will, a paper towel. I will tell you, my mom, like, her take on paper towels, she's just like, I bought those to use them. <laughs> and we will use them. We now, will use these I paper think for towels. Us, like, my grandmother, I think, was more uh, thrifty in what she had and what yeah. would be used. So I think my grandmother was more than my mom. Yeah. I don't know. I never got the, aside from what I just said, I, I don't have this memory of my mom being like, did you throw away that paper bag? Why? Because you're going to reuse it eight more times. We're going to use it. <laughs> I find, like, that's probably more like what I would do, where I'm just like, you know what? I don't know. Do we need to wash the shirt? I'll, wash, I'll wear it again. It's and fine. If you're, if you're so close to me <laughs> that my f- smell offends you, back up. You shouldn't maybe, be standing that close. Maybe the question is the things that we do that are more cheaper than maybe I know, our family I, used to do back in the day. I don't know. I'd, I'd say I'm a cheapskate. Then come look at my computer. Uh-huh. No, we're cheap. I think at least our age, everybody's cheaper about uh, maybe things that we should spend a little bit more money on. So we spend money on crap, yes. but the stuff that maybe we should oh, spend yeah. money on, we're like, I'm not buying that. You're like, I'll, I'll go to McDonald's instead of like getting some quality groceries, sure. <laughs> that sort of thing. Or I'll be like, man, groceries are so expensive, but we'll go do this and that. Nikki, groceries suck. You have They're not ready made. I don't like anything adult-wise. If you spend money on that, that's when you just analyze it and 
You just so talk true. yourself out of it. Like so true. I told myself the other day, I was like, we have got to buy some clothes. <laughs> you know, we have to, but we'll spend money on other stuff while we don't have new clothes. Well, I'll tell you yesterday, since we're being so honest here. Did you buy here, clothes? No, I bought those shoes, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. Those shoes were $30. And I was like, do you really want to spend that $30? It is now, only 30 That was three hours after I had for $20 pre-ordered the Flash Gordon 4K remaster. Do you uh, see, see the, the disconnect? Problem? So I, I don't even want to hear any more about what parents did that were cheap. It's just we're weird enough. <laughs> the Riot Radio U. It's true. All of us need vending machines in our lives. A little bit more than maybe we used to. And I continue to hold out the Coke Freestyle machine here in the corner. Just something in-house. <laughs> Do you know that I haven't been able to access personally a Coke Freestyle machine since the COVID curtain fell? Well, do you not count like Wendy's or something? Or can't, the Wendy's oh, that I went to, they, I in. can't get to it now. Someone can make it for me, but I like to. I like a custom mix. You're right. It's not to where you can do it yourself. I like to do some things on my own, and they're like, no, 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 you can't do that. Well, again, in Rochester, New York, someone is introducing an absolutely spectacular idea. Mm-hmm. What is it? It is a meat vending machine. Hey. That way they're able to sell their items but still have the social distancing? He calls it the 24-hour meat machine. So the idea is that uh, as at the butcher shop, apparently he was having some trouble selling stuff. Yeah. So this enables you to come in. Uh, you can buy meat from the vending machine and still get the fresh butchered meat. Okay, so it's not like it's cooked. It's not like restaurant stuff. It's basically if you were to go into a butcher, it's the same thing, but through the vending machine. But see, Nikki, if we get that short order cook we want... Then someone could cook it for us. So then I go over there and I'm like, you know, I could go for some filet this morning. He said technically it's not just like his idea totally. He had a friend who does a meat company that's been using refrigerated meat vending machines for years. I've well, never seen that, but I haven't seen it either. It's a thing. So I'm he in. kept trying to get his friend to do this, and with the coronavirus and the efforts to keep people safe, that was the idea to still be able to sell their product. Just something that you had to do, right? I love it. A meat vending machine. Wait. Well, sometimes when you see Why things didn't you that make way, that face, no, Nikki. I like Explain meat, but when you face. when you see it all like that, and then. You're reminded it doesn't come from the meat tree. Yeah, I feel like it's hard. I don't know if I'll take it as well coming from the vending machine. Or maybe it's better. I'm not sure. Can we be honest? You wouldn't even be the one going to the vending machine anyway. Actually, can we be real honest? Who has cash for the vending machine? Well, it takes cards. Does it take credit card? If you look oh, at it. I with went to, meat hey, prices, you, know you would have to. <laughs> I went to a vending machine the other day and got to use Apple Pay. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> that's good. So, I mean, that's, that's The only thing. time is if I have to take my car in for something. <laughs> it's usually the only time I'm around vending machines. Actually, strangely enough, I got my oil changed the other day. I still get it changed at the dealership because it's I got like a deal on it and it gives them an opportunity to try to sell me insane service. Yeah. And uh, they used to have free soda and free this and free that. Not anymore, buddy. No way. You got to pay. <laughs> so they were saying they they had planned to debut it um actually this past Monday, but they had stocked it on last Friday going into the weekend and it only took a few hours for people to hear about what he was doing, so it went really well. It's so he said he had to restock it in the middle of the day. Mhm. Cuz of oh, so many customers. We should have burgers. I'll take a burger. You know what? I've been talking about burgers all morning. I Why feel you like just, the, you need one this weekend. I Maybe tomorrow s- or Saturday. Uh, how about for lunch today? Well, you could do that too. I thought how you were going to make them. Like, are no, you going to grill no, them? No, no, I don't want to do any work. If you missed out on the next riot moment when it originally aired, you don't know how lucky you are. You're listening to the worst of the riot podcast. So I was asking, you know, do you feel safe with the idea of like maybe taking a trip? Going somewhere, haven't seen grandma in a while, but you got to fly to get there or whatever. You know, would you do it? And we really weren't sure. And you know what? I don't know if we can trust the government to tell us whether or not it's safe. Because I'm looking at this, Traverse City, Michigan. You know, they had the flooding. Mm -hmm. And as a result of some of the flooding, there was a a 54,000-gallon sewage spill. Ooh, that's bad. Where sewage just dropped into the waterways. And I want you to know that uh, they went in and said, yeah, go, 
at first... Oh, to go in the water like you at, can still boat and stuff? At first, Traverse City Health Department was like, do not get in the Boardman River or parts of the Grand Traverse Bay. Just don't. No. Yeah. That was May 28th. It's June 3rd, and they're like, hey, we're lifting the advisory. It's cool. No, no. I need more time than that. It's cool. Uh, They say that the E. coli levels now meet recreational water quality standards for full body contact. You know, I know it's true. I know it is. Uh, But when I think about the fact that there is an acceptable amount of E. coli that can be in the water for me, it's like, wait, 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 wait. What? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, 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 it's an acceptable amount. You go into the water, you get a little E. coli. What you worried about, son? There always is. I just don't think we. I don't think we want to know. I don't think you want to actually know the the what is allowed and how bad it has to be in order for them to tell you to not get in. Yeah. So there are parts of it that are acceptable for swimming, and others they're like wading, fishing, paddling. But let's not do swimming yet. Still too poopy. I get nervous around. <laughs> I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna lie. Lake stuff sometimes scares me more. <laughs> It's it's just worrisome because of some areas where there can be things going around. I will tell you what really, really hurt me when it came to lake swimming. Mm-hmm. I was at a public beach, was having a good time, and some a lake lady beach or an ocean. Y- beach? Yes, yes, like Lake Beach, and some lady just let her dog run down and uh, you know leave something behind in the water, oh, and really? I was just like, How did the dog do that? I don't know. But I just, what one? <laughs> number two. Really? The and, dog, and she just didn't. I mean, can you pick it up? <laughs> it's I just to. had this moment where I was like, yeah, that's... and she didn't even yell at the dog. She just watched him do it and just whatever. And I was like, you know what? It's time to go home. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to go home. I, you know what? I have a shower at home. I'll just stand there and pretend I'm swimming. It's fine. It's different. You know, it, each beach is different. All right. Everything offers something this way. Maybe it might be a negative, something over there that's a positive. You know what, Nikki? We're all different, aren't we? Yeah. Everybody's got, <laughs> got their own. I remember I we had thing. one near us that had like a, a health warning. And so we went, though, just to see and and people were all in the beach. Oh, yeah. And that's where I saw the the obviously very pregnant lady drinking. And then there was this ice cream truck that looked straight out of health codes like violations yeah. and i just i remember turning to erica's like no <laughs> we're not gonna rest here today i don't know what's going on <laughs> it's too much uh, too much stuff well just a heads up before you go running to the beach do a little googling see where it's at i'd rather put my feet in my tub at home sure and just sit there hey man maybe even the ball in the in the bowl at home because at <laughs> least you know where it came from <laughs> I gave during the last fundraiser, and all I got was this crappy morning show. This is The Riot on Listener Supported Radio U. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you one of the single greatest Netflix stealing scams in the history of Netflix stealing. Totally a great idea. You're like, it's not stealing, it's password sharing. Well, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's not necessarily you know, against Netflix, but they were not together anymore. When you're not a couple anymore, if you were sharing things, this is technically not your place anymore to still have this password. I'll tell you this right now. I had a friend of mine who was dating somebody who gave him all her parents' passwords for everything. And for like a whole year after they broke up, this guy was still riding the free content gravy train. No way. If you're not together, you don't get it. And then at some point, somebody somewhere figured it out and all the passwords disappeared on one day. That's why you've got to make sure that this is the right person before you share passwords. (laughs) Okay. So uh, somebody said that, uh, okay, let me see if I get this right. Brothers X had been using, so like this guy's brother's ex-girlfriend yes. had been using his Netflix account. Now, they all had a family account, though, so they would all still see each other's, um, you know, section that you would have. Right. So when the breakup happens, you know, she's going to disappear from the account, except she does and doesn't. She does disappear from the account, but Netflix pushes a new option that they hadn't seen before. It's called Settings. And so this lady took her profile, renamed it settings, 
put the little spinny wheel loading thing on it. As the icon? And for two solid months, he thought it was a Netflix settings option. So no one, no, not just him, like the whole family who still used it, never clicked on it to find out. And then somebody ends up clicking it because they need to change something, only to realize that it's just her profile and she's been using it the entire time. So they were saying like, well, at this point it was so clever. Do you let her still use it? No, absolutely not. You, you send her out. You log her out. You send her, her a bill for, you know, however much she was supposed to pay each month yeah. and you get your money back. Someone else was saying how they, I think it was on Hulu or maybe still Netflix, but they added the icon uh to re- like click here to remove the account so like plus remove yeah. and uh then they said no one will touch their profile because they think that's what you click to remove something wow so there's things you can do and and make it look like that if you want to still use someone's account yeah but i'll just tell you if they change the password you're screwed you'll you're be out. found out one day but how many months can you get for free how long can you drag it out Best of luck. I, I want to. <laughs> she got a couple of months out of it. She definitely did. I I have never heard of anything like that. I think it's amazing. So way to go, y'all. This was the worst of the riot. And we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end. <laughs> the riot exists because Radio U exists. And Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now at radiou.com slash donate.